I am Shalitha Robertson, and I want to serve as your Superior Court Judge. For more than 30 years, I've served the public as a police officer, a public defender, and a city attorney. I love America. I respect the Constitution. I'll be effective, efficient, fair, and firm. I'll be an interpreter of the law, not an advocate. I am Shalitha Robertson, and I'm ready to be your judge. On May 20th, Coach Shalitha Robertson, experience we can trust. Hey, what's up with y'all man i'm back again with another video so listen man this right here is a crazy crazy situation and everything that i'm saying in this video from beginning to the end is all alleged on my end but y'all will be getting real bona fide facts about the situation pretty soon so let's go ahead and get straight into the whole situation at hand and if you're rocking with the channel man hit the like button for me let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section and add on my social medias as well if y'all want to add those but other than that let's go ahead and get into it so basically long story short I've been telling y'all about PPP for years, man. <laughs> I remember my first video about the PPP stuff. People were saying all type of different stuff. People not going to jail and stuff like that. Now everybody looking crazy. And it is a couple of fools out there still saying, did nobody go to jail, so I'm going to do it this time and this and this and that. All right, keep on playing. Yeah, it's going to be in jail. Now, now, I don't knock nobody for trying to get no money. You know, that's just how I feel. If you got the loan, whatever the case may be, then that's what's up more power to you my thing is people who are here doing the most craziest stuff to get it like falsifying information lying saying this and saying that as far as like doing stuff that's outrageous now saying that you got a business knowing damn well you don't got no business and you know just getting 500 600 700 thousand a million and all that type of stuff man you're really tripping bro <laughs> you know what i'm saying saying you got 10,000 employees and it's just you at the house every day it's just slow as hell but it is what it is, you know. Some people got forgiveness, but some people don't realize that they going back and rechecking certain things to make sure that everything checks out. So it is what it is. If you know, back in the day when you did your forgiveness, they automatically approved it. That was the computer. But now they trying to go back and get everything situated to where they can go back and check on certain things. So y'all better be aware and don't jump on the train again if you're not really ready for what comes with it, or if you really don't have a business. I just hate that they can make us look so crazy. Well, I can't say us, but, you know, yeah, us. Yeah, people, we, we the people, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I just hate that they do certain things a certain way. And they knew everybody was going to get out here and do this. So, you know, pe people feel for the base, so I can't feel sorry for them. And there's some people out there, like I just said before, still talking mess, like they finna go get another one. All right, we're going to see y'all mugs, shall we see if y'all smelling like y'all is right now. But I don't wish jail or nothing like that on nobody. I just hope that everybody can use their brains and can maneuver properly. With all this money that's floating around, you can get your money without trying to defraud the government in a crazy way. But other than that, I said what I had to say. Let's get into it. Shalita Renee Robinson stole $7 million. She spent $150,000 on the ring. She bought a Rolls Royce. She was just cutting the hell up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just tripping. I don't understand what could possess you to go ahead and get this much money. But it is what it is. Let's go ahead and get into the video. I did find the video about her, but I also threw a couple of more in here to do a compilation video. So let's get into it. Former Atlanta City Attorney and Atlanta Police Department officers been indicted on charges that she stole pandemic relief funds. Channel 2 investigative reporter Justin Gray with us now live in South Fulton County, where you've been looking through this new indictment. Oh, Justin, yeah. It was just in October that the Rene Group here was awarded a significant chunk of a $99 million to cap contract. But this week, the owner of the Renee Group, Shalitha, I'm sorry, Shalitha Rene Robinson was it Robertson was indicted on charges that she stole millions of tax dollars. Hello, it's Justin Gray with Channel 2. I'm trying to reach Shalitha Robertson. No answer at the call box to the front gates of Chateau Royal, the grand South Fulton estate. Listed with the Secretary of State as the principal address of Shalitha Robertson's company. Got a nice Renee home. Group. Shalitha Renee Robertson is a former Atlanta police officer and Atlanta city attorney who currently has a lucrative contract with DeKalb County worth millions to repair sewage and water systems. She's also just been charged in this federal indictment, alleged to have stolen $7 million in COVID relief, paycheck protection program funds, and into to help keep people employed during the pandemic. In a Channel 2 Action News investigation last month, we found more than 553,000 Georgia businesses received PPP loans, totaling more than $24 billion just in Georgia. But federal prosecutors told us that tens of millions of dollars of that money here in Georgia went to fake companies trying to steal your tax dollar. Mm. This new indictment alleges that Shalitha Robertson spent PPP money on personal expenses like a Rolls Royce. <laughs> <laughs> 
$28,000 for a 10 karat diamond ring. Mm. Hello, Justin Gray with Channel 2. I see 150, but it's all good. At the Renee Group Warehouse, but DeKalb County Records show, it's one of four companies just awarded in October a $99 million contract to repair DeKalb sewer systems. DeKalb County tells us in a statement, quote, the county was unaware that Ms. Robertson was under investigation by federal authorities for any type of wrongdoing. Mm. And while this indictment, DeKalb County will review all contracts and our relationship with Ms. Robertson. <laughs> Stupid fool. Reaction. And Robertson's former business partner, Chandra Norton, has already entered a guilty plea to similar charges. She's awaiting sentencing, my boy. Sentencing. Shit. Ryan Buchanan says in a statement tonight, quote, we will continue to vigorously prosecute anyone who fraudulently attains these critical funds. Look, like I said before, you got to be a damn fool. You taking, it's, then she a part of something that's got some to do with 99 million. They like, man, we ain't finna miss this up for us. You know what I'm saying? Take your ass on somewhere. But yeah, to go out here and splurge like that, not understanding that all these consequences come with this is just crazy to me. You an attorney. I mean, she done work for the police station. I mean, you just out here. You know what the hell going on. I think the greed and lust just takes over people's minds and they just lose all their better judgment and they go too damn far. I just don't understand it, man. You know, like I said, I don't get, I don't get, I don't really give a damn about nobody doing nothing, honestly. That's your business. But damn, to do it so idiotically is just crazy. Like, damn, like you slobbering slow. Let's get back into it. Shit. I'm boy having hell talking. Now to a Channel 2 investigation. Now this is the other videos now. One of the largest frauds in American history. Money intended to go to those hurt financially by the pandemic. Instead, stolen by fake companies and cons. Channel 2 investigator Justin Gray tonight in studio. Justin, federal prosecutors have hundreds of cases in Wichita, in Georgia alone. Yes. On who receives these loans is publicly available. We've been looking through yep. it and looking at some of these companies that are registered with the Secretary of State and don't have an online presence. We wanted to find them and ask them a simple question. What does your company do? Oh, that man. That wasn't so simple. <laughs> Let's get I'm it. I'm trying to reach Money in a Problem Entertainment. Oh, oh Alexa. Okay. Is that you? <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's at work. No, he knows. He know damn well. <laughs> he couldn't know going to the people's house saying this shit right there. <laughs> Money ain't a problem. <laughs> I bet it wasn't when that chick cleared. <laughs> See what I'm saying, bro? I was just speaking about people having these crazy ass names associated with a business. And then you go into the good. Like, look, bro, you making a mockery of yourself because when you go to court, they're going to read this out loud. And it's gonna make you look crazy and feel crazy, man. You gotta be careful with what you do. Damn, boy, money ain't a problem. Goddamn, he said no, it ain't. He's at work. Come on now, no, it, no, it isn't. My bad. This Gwinnett County home looking Can't for a company right. that received more than twenty-two thousand dollars in federal paycheck <laughs> protection program payments. We couldn't find money in a problem entertainment registered with the Georgia Secretary of State mm. or active online. Mm. We received a PPP loan and we can't find any record of the business existing. So I'm just trying to understand what it is. <laughs> oh, see, I don't know. We dug through thousands of pages of PPP data and found that more than 553,000 PPP loans were handed out in Georgia. Totaling more than $24 billion Ooh. just in Georgia. But we know that tens of millions of dollars of that Damn. money here in Georgia went to fake companies trying to steal your tax dollars. And the strip club. <laughs> righteous use of your federal tax dollars to go after these people. David Estes is the U.S. Attorney oh, for the shit. Southern District of Georgia. And you're sending the message here, if you cheat the American taxpayers, we're going to find you. And, and we will. He says it doesn't matter how small the dollar amount of the potential fraud. We're going to look at every single case. Now look. Uh, some of the... Now, some of the things that was online a long time ago was saying that they wasn't going to be looking for cases up under 25000 I don't know how true that is because he's saying another thing. But different places do different things. Different counties do different things. You know what I'm saying. Different states. Stuff like that. But anyway, it go, man. They looking. And it is what it is. If you got the money and you nervous and things like that, just pay it back. I'm pretty sure they, can't, they ain't not going to prosecute this many people but they're gonna definitely get a lot of folks because i mean like i said before i feel like this was all a, a, a money grab for everybody they knew that people was gonna be falling for this so why not go ahead and throw the alley for them because they're gonna get the money back 
off of the inmates in return. You see what I'm saying? From taxpayers' dollars. They're going to win all the way around, no matter how you try to twist it and turn it. And the people, they thought it was going to be a little quick win. And some people were going through drastic things, so they did what they had to do. And I can really, really understand it. But if you wasn't going through anything, if you were just out here being crazy as you can be to get this type of money, millions and hundreds of thousands, it's sad to say, man, shit, boy. I ain't going to say you deserve to go to jail because they beat us out of so much money all the time. But I can understand why you're going to jail. Let's get back into it, though. Smaller cases have led us to bigger cases. This is one of those cases Eskies is prosecuting. Decula resident Ashley Parker allegedly submitted more than two dozen fraudulent applications for Damn. COVID relief, adding up to $2 million. Prosecutors charged she spent part of those illegal proceeds on plastic surgery, including breast augmentation and liposuction. Damn. Hi, it's Justin with Channel 2. I'm trying to reach <laughs> Ashley. Hello? Get off my foot, man. I'm putting up the y'all, man. Ooh, to track down put some on your ass, boy. Cars, a Mercedes, and a Lexus in the driveway. Oh, the person shit. who answered the doorbell called me several names we can't say on television. Mm. Is Ashley here? No, your mama here. Ooh. No, I don't think so. I'm looking for Ashley Parker. Mr. Smith is just <laughs> yeah. It was nearly two years ago that I tracked down to Bronx Smith at his Gwinnett County business, Market Yourself LLC. At the time, he maintained he never stole PPP funds as a federal indictment alleged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you do everything by the book? Look at my boy. Why would they indict you? That's not really kind of plea. That's disrespectful. But Smith has now entered a guilty plea. And they zoomed in. And <laughs> the U.S. attorney is asking for a 21-month prison term. God so damn. So money and a problem entertainment. No one associated <laughs> with money and a problem is facing criminal charges, but we still can't find any signs of a business or employees earning paychecks. The woman who mm. answered the door promised to go get the owner of money and a problem to answer a question. So we wait and wait. Okay, here. We never heard back from Money and a Problem, but this summer, President Biden signed. Cuz ass in the damn bathroom in his room playing the game. He, he probably mad as hell. Y'all told him I'm here. Y'all tree. <laughs> he probably jumped on somebody. <laughs> Whoever came to the door probably saw his heel. <laughs> he probably just whooped some ass over there real quick. Let's get back to it and see what the hell he got to say about Biden. Bill's extending the statute of limitations <laughs> for pandemic related fraud to 10 years from five. And I'm sure a lot of these people think, hey, I got the money, I'm on my way. And you're here to say that's not. No, that's not the case. We've got 16 uh, different federal agencies working on this. Shit. $22 billion just in Georgia. So there's definitely Ooh. some criminals who thought they could get away with stealing maybe ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 and nobody would notice or catch them. They might still think they got away with it, but hundreds of federal agents and prosecutors are now digging through that data looking for signs of fake companies. You heard the U.S. attorney there. He called it a righteous use. We are now hearing from Broward Sheriff Gregory Tony after 17 deputies have been arrested and charged with fraud. I remember Local this Miami. Is live with this developing story. Roy. What's up, Roy? Shit. Hey, Colin, we have learned that nearly 100 BSO employees did apply Shit. for PPP loans. And of the 100, 17 of them are now facing federal charges. Well, as you mentioned today, we did get a chance to speak with Broward Sheriff Gregory Tony about these one. allegations. And he says if his employees were involved in this type of criminal activity, they do not deserve to be working in the law enforcement profession. Did you believe you were receiving these loans legitimately? 17 members of the Broward Sheriff's Office, which include both BSO deputies and detention deputies, released from the federal courthouse in Fort Lauderdale after being indicted on charges that include wire fraud after federal investigators said they fraudulently applied for and received funds from the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP, loans. Mm. We're set. They're being released. Uh, nobody, as far as I know, is being detained. And uh, we'll take it from there. We'll be back in court. Attorney Brian Silver represents three of the defendants, some of whom have either been suspended or placed on leave pending the outcome of the investigation. I can't comment on the nature of the case. While the charging documents do not allege that any of the defendants committed the charge offenses in the course of their official duties, this does not in any way diminish the seriousness of what the defendants are alleged to have done here. Sheriff Gregory Tony said he first learned of the crimes in November of 2021, prompting him to investigate all 5,500 of his employees, including himself and other top brass. Of the 17 indicted, seven BSO deputies and one sergeant in law enforcement, and eight detention deputies and one sergeant in corrections. I hate to see that knowing some of the individuals and seeing the names on that list that's being indicted, indicted 
Some of them were good officers. But you're only as good as the last act and conduct that you execute. We learned the defendants involved received tens of thousands of dollars, and while the investigation has proved that some of whom were investigated did have legitimate businesses, at the very least, the 17 now facing federal charges allegedly did not. If you're going to be mm. participating in criminal activities, we don't want you in this profession. Oh, my boy, been ready to fire their ass. <laughs> and while 17 BSO employees have been indicted, we are told that this investigation does continue and there could be more indictments to come. We'll be sure to stay on top of this. For now, outside of BSO headquarters near Fort Lauderdale, yes. where more than a dozen BSO employees were charged in a PPP loan fraud investigation. Six of the employees charged in the case appeared in federal court moments ago. Local 10 News reporter Sarah Onward is live. I got the update. Okay, yes. let's go on then. So five of those individuals were arraigned today. A sixth had her arraignment rescheduled to next week. They all appeared here at the federal courthouse in Fort Lauderdale before the same judge to hear their charges. We'll take you to video now. More than a dozen Broward Sheriff's Office employees are suspected of fraudulently applying Damn. for and receiving Paycheck Protection Program oh, PPP loans. So the loans were established during the pandemic to help businesses pay their workers amid all of the restrictions. So 17 employees who work as either sworn law enforcement, BSO deputies, or jailers, they face federal charges. Six of them appear today for arraignment on PPP wire fraud charges. They were Deputy Alexandra Acosta, Marcus Powell, Deputy Alan Dorville, Ansi Moranzi, and Carolyn Wade. Damn. Those five all entered not guilty pleas and requested a trial by jury. Katrina Brown, she had her arraignment reset to next week so she could secure an attorney. So back out here on the scene now, all of those individuals uh, who appeared today who were uh, able to get arraigned, they requested a trial by jury. They all pleaded not guilty and uh, none of them had any comment uh, to media as they stepped out of the courthouse today but we'll keep you updated as this develops but that is the very latest from downtown fort lauderdale cyber online here Damn. in Joliet, Operation Triple P targeted county jail inmates who uh, PPP. So listen, I got this video posted about them actually being in jail, getting PPP loans and stuff like that. I'm probably going to put the link to that video here at the uh, at the bottom in the comment sections and things like that. That way y'all can watch the full video in its entirety with a lot more details than this right here. But I will let y'all go ahead and finish watching this one right here. But I do want to know y'all thoughts and opinions on this whole situation. And I'm going to holler at y'all at the end of this video. <laughs> all right. A trial by jury. They all pleaded not guilty. And uh, none of them had any comment uh, to media as they stepped out of the courthouse today. But we'll keep you updated as this develops. But that is the very latest from downtown Fort Lauderdale, Syrah Onward. Matthews here in Joliet, Operation Triple P targeted county jail inmates who falsified PPP loan applications and received thousands of dollars, some even using that money to bond out of jail. The police chief here says this operation will help put them back in jail and will help reduce gun violence and drug trafficking in his city. 25 Will County Jail inmates already locked up for weapons and drug felony cases are now facing charges like wire fraud and theft. Some of the targets bonded out on their felony cases days after receiving their fraudulent PPP loan. Operation Triple P began in November of last year. Detectives began to compare names on Paycheck Protection Program loans to names of inmates facing felonies, which should have disqualified them from the financial assistance. So far, 15 of them have been charged. Police are still looking for these 10. The majority of them also use their home address. So we did a, several periodic uh, spot checks on the residents. It just looked like a residence. For example, Maria Beach and Adrian Clark locked up during the pandemic for unrelated gun offenses. From their cell, they applied for and received PPP loans. Maria claimed to run a barber shop from this home in Rockdale. Adrian claimed to run a barber shop from an apartment in this Joliet house. Maria received nearly $21,000 in federal loans. Adrian, who has a history with Joliet Police, got two PPP loans for the same barbershop location, totaling $42,000. Both are now part of the 15 locked up again. Joliet Police had help from U.S. Marshals, the Will County State's Attorney's Office, Department of Labor, and Homeland Security. These triple P loans that if they're obtained fraudulently, they're taking that money out of the businesses in our local area that actually need them. 
The acting special agent charged for Chicago's Homeland Security Office says this type of PPP loan fraud has been happening across the country. In Joliet, Elizabeth Matthews, Fox 32. All right, now that y'all have seen everything that's going on with these PPP so far and what's been going on in the past, I want to know y'all honest thoughts and opinions on this situation. Do y'all feel like y'all will get another one if you got one? And do y'all feel like y'all might be in some trouble in the future? Now, me personally, I don't know what's going on and what the future may behold. But, you know, I feel like that if you did get the money and if, if they give you the opportunity to pay it back, try your best to pay it back. That way you can avoid all the humiliation and things like that, which I wouldn't give a damn about being humiliated if I was trying to do what's best for my family. But overall, you know, ultimately, you know, I just hope that everybody out there that genuinely listen to someone else or believe someone else about certain things that had something to do with the PPP loan. You know, I just genuinely hope that they can get through these situations because a lot of people did get gullible when it came to this much money. And it's kind of understandable because we've been going through a lot of shit over the past couple of years. But overall, man, that's all I got to say. I want to know your thoughts and opinions, and I will holler at y'all later on another video. If you made it to the end of this video, I do appreciate y'all, but I'll holler at y'all later. All right. And make sure y'all watch the other video, too. It's going to be in the comment section.